Welcome to the world of the Thunder Dragon, a country that has a proud and traditional people that have remained true to their heritage. A land that sounds as if it's some sort of fairy tale land that one would go on an adventure. But here on FTD Facts, we are going on an adventure again, but not talking about a fairy tale, but to return to talk about the great country of Bataan. And in our last video, some of you guys had some really nice things to say about Bataan, so we're doing a part two, such as Kaiser Ahmed that said, I love Bataan love and respect from Bangladesh. We had Ashika Raud who said finally Bataan is a beautiful country, lots of love from India and that had like 156 thumbs up. Also Abhishek Benia said Bataan always makes me feel like home, love from Nepal. And Rinzen Lamo said thank you for doing Bataan. And considering we're returning talking about the land of the thunder dragon, I want to know, do you remember your first time you were ever afraid of thunder? Can you describe that experience to me down there? I've been afraid of it, you probably have. Can you even remember Remember that young? Let me know down there. So in our last video, we listed off some really cool facts about the country, but we failed to dive into its history and find out how this small but mighty country started in the first place. Bataan over the years has had a complex history, and there's some evidence that indicates that Bataan had people inhabiting the region over 2,000 years ago. However, unfortunately, there's not much evidence except for major theories. But there's also been a few breadcrumbs to prove that maybe the Manpa people of the Anuchal Pradesh region were in Bataan long before Buddhism from Tibet came to the country in the 7th century. And the introduction of Tibetan Buddhism is all thanks to Songstan Gampo, who is the king of Tibet. Now he in fact ordered two Buddhist temples to be built within Bataan. One was in Jakar village in the Bumthang Valley, and the other is the Kichu Lakang Temple in Paro Valley. And currently it still stands today and it is the oldest temple being built back in the 7th century. Now speaking of this temple, it was visited by Guru Padma Shemheva. And when it comes to Bataan, this guy is very important. Because around the mid 700s, he helped influence Buddhism more within the country and also also assisted in building the first official Buddhist monastery in Tibet called the Samye. Now we know he's important in Tibet and he brought Buddhism into Bataan, but are there other reasons as well? Well, if you look at the Tiger's Nest or the Piro Taksang, which is a world famous temple that was built in 1692. Now this thing is located in Bataan and it's also located at the side of a cliff. Who would build a temple on the side of a cliff? That sounds insane. The reason for this is that it is an entrance to the cave that Guru Padma Shamheva, who was said to have meditated in this cave for three whole years. Which makes me sort of draw a conclusion that's where they got the idea of Luke Skywalker hiding in a cave in episode 8. Maybe? Now as for this temple, it is quite a climb as it sits 10,240 feet above sea level and to climb up it you need to go 3,000 feet above the Paro Valley. However, there are multiple directions to come from when going to the temple. But as you climb or go through the forest from its rear, cloud cover will give it an eerie feeling as you approach it. And at this temple, during the months of March and April is a very special celebration. This is Teshu, which is a festival that honors Padma Shama. And during these festivals, the main focus are intricate cultural traditional dances called sham dances, which are vignettes that tell short stories of the life of Padmasheva. Now let's jump back to the history of Bataan because one downside is that most of its history and records were destroyed during a really bad fire. During the years of the 1900s and before, the city of Panaka served as capital until it was moved to Timfu in 1955, which ironically is only about 72 kilometers away and that that might not seem very long, but it does take like three hours to get there because there's so many winding roads. Now the fire happened in 827 causing great damage to the Panaka Dzong, which was the major political building at the time. As well, it is the second oldest Dzong in all of Bataan being built between the years of 1636 and 1638. And despite its major history of fires and damage from earthquakes, it still stands today and is still one of the most amazing Dzongs in all of Bataan. 
As well, it was the place where the king of Bataan, Wang Chuck, and his wife Pima got married in 2011. Now speaking of Zhongs, these buildings have major meaning to them. For example, the very first Zhong being built was the Simtoka Zhong, which translates to the place of profound meaning of secret mantras. It was built in 1629 by Zemdrung Nagyal, who's pretty much famous for uniting all the different groups within the country, making Bataan one big national state. And let's fast forward a bit because in 1907, it was a big year for Bataan. A lot changed. It was during this time that Ojin Wang Chuk became crowned as the first king of Bataan. And although Bataan had its leaders before, this was the first time it ever became a Buddhist monarchy. And it's also interesting to know that Wang Chuk had been ruling for over a decade before 1907, being known as Druk Desi when he took claim after his father died in 1885. Now with this new monarchy, the British had become interested in Bataan. Thus Bataan signed the Treaty of Panaka in 1910. Now this created an alliance with the British, in which the British then handled all the foreign affairs, making Bataan an India princely state. Now this didn't even last half a century because on August 8th, of 1949, Bataan followed with its other South Asian countries gaining its independence from the United Kingdom, becoming its own country. And although today Bataan is its own independent nation, it is a very peaceful one that has great respect for its neighbors. This is a country that is quite landlocked and because of that it has no navy nor air force. However, it does have several different branches of its military. And that includes the Bataan Police, the Royal Bataan Army, the Royal Bataan Bodyguards, and the Royal Bataan Militia. And because Bataan has great relationships with India, most of its military forces are trained from Indian forces. As well, Bataan's Air Force is provided by this big brother to the west. And to this day, within the Royal Bataan Army, they have only about 8,000 personnel. With about another 8,000 in other branches, it spends about $13.7 million on its military a year. And if you want to be a soldier and you're living within the country, well, it's completely voluntary, you just have to be 18 years old. And even though the country does not have a powerful and large army, it doesn't need that to be considered great. Because Bataan has many valleys and is also part of the Himalayas, it is a hot spot for biodiversity. Currently, they have over 5,400 species of plants and 770 bird species. And that's not even getting close to the amount of mammals they have as well, because they have a plethora of many different animals, which a big majority of them are primates. And in our last video, we did mention how Bataan has 60% of its land dedicated to green space. But to add to that, in 2014, they began to push for more electric cars so they could be more green. And currently, one out of 10 vehicles on the road are running on electricity. Now one thing you may also notice if you've ever been to Bataan, you may notice on some houses there are photos or drawings of dicks. That's right, the photos of a phallus or a penis are generally seen on houses throughout the country. However, most of them are not allowed in urban areas. And no, it's not some teenager that's just spraying these on for a practical joke like we would see in North America. It's because during the time of these drawings, they were meant to ward off evil and malicious gossip. And I don't know how that works because up here in Canada, if I drew a phallus on my house, like a big one, I'm pretty sure that would generate a lot of gossip. They'd probably think, you know, I was that kind of guy. But considering we're talking about erections, let's talk about something that is erect. And that is Mount Gangkar Pyun Sum. It is the highest mountain in Bataan and you are not allowed to climb it. Standing at 24,836 feet, it is named the White Peak of the Three Spiritual Brothers. And what makes this mountain so special? Well, like I said, you're not allowed to climb it because it is deemed unclimbable. Now this might be due to the fact that in 2003, mountain climbing is pretty much not allowed in all of Bataan. And this might be linked to the fact that if you were to climb this mountain and get injured, there would be no form of immediate rescue. Because like I said, the air force and helicopters are all provided from India, and that would take a long time for them to get rescue to you. And therefore, it's probably a good reason why Bataan outlaws mountain climbing. And to close it all off, considering we're talking about its relationship with India, this is a country that has diplomatic relations with 52 countries around the world, creating not just good relationships with its immediate neighbors, but countries on the other side of the planet. 
But that's it for today's episode. I hope you guys really did enjoy and learned a lot more about the interesting country known as Bataan. But you know what? My name is Dave Wapple, guys, and it has been amazing learning about this country. I'm not going to lie. I think this is way better than the first one because we really dove into some history and learned more about its people. And speaking of which, if you guys have a recommendation for a future FTD Facts video and it's your first time here, put it down here for all you guys that are returning. I know you hear it from us a million times. We'll, we'll try to tone it down on the recommendations reminders for everybody. But for now, we'll just keep telling everybody. Also, if you guys want to help us out even more, be sure to check out our Patreon because we have exclusive content that you guys won't get on YouTube, such as extra videos that nobody else is going to see but you. And last but not least, check out Grammarly.com. You can get a free app to increase your grammar. It's really cool. It's helpful even to me. But back to Bataan, what can we take away from this video? Well, we know that it is a country that has an interesting history, and although maybe small and surrounded by bigger countries, it is still a country that tries to do its own thing in its own way. With a great culture and people who have roots in traditional values, the country of Bataan may have a small population, but it is indeed bigger than it seems. The mysterious land of the Thunder Dragon that attracts the young, the bold, and is home to the true. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. If you like this video and you want to know more about Bataan, but you missed our first one, check it out right there. You can also sign up for our Grammarly. You can also do our Patreon thing. The links for that are going to be down below. Oh, and if you guys want to learn about something different than South Asian content, yo, check out this video about Russia. It's really cool, really interesting. But other than that, if it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cool? Bye. Why'd I snap my fingers? <laughs>